Hi people, welcome back to the tutorial on how to hack Metasploitable 2. Before I go on, I'd like to re-emphasize this channel has one purpose and that is to educate you about IT security. The knowledge you take away from this should be used to make the world a better place. So please do not, under any circumstance, use the knowledge from this tutorial to cause distress or harm to others. The content of this video has been edited to adhere to the spirit of the community platform. Today we're going to take advantage of the fact that port 23 is open. Telnet is the service running on our port. I know there are debates as to whether it's, it's relevant to talk about Telnet, um, but we're doing it for educational purposes. Quick heads up, um, Telnet is obviously one of the earliest remote logging protocols on the internet. Um, it was initially released way back to about 50 years ago now, really, and was for a long time the default way to access remote network computers. It's a client server protocol that provides the user um, a terminal session to the remote host from the, uh, from the client application. The thing about the protocol is it doesn't provide any built in security measures. So therefore, the use of Telnet over the public network, such as the internet, should be avoided due to the risk of eavesdropping. Um, we looked at that protocol earlier, SSH, and it has practically replaced Telnet. As always, our methodology remains the same here as we're going to use the Metasploit framework to try to take advantage of these open ports. But the first thing to do is to make sure that you've got your PostgreSQL service up and running. I've got mine here up and running. You can check the status, it's active. And um, you tap MSF console and um, it should produced uh, the, the shell that you can see on the screen. Uh, we're going to be using an auxiliary scanner called uh, Telnet Logging. So uh, let's see what the options are for settings. It's quite a few. So um, uh, as part of the exploit, we're going to need to we're going to need files containing candidate credentials for using them and passwords. Um, I've created some here on my desktop. You can see a username, um, very short list, and and the password as well. Um, alternatively, if you're running a packet sniffer like Wireshark or TCP dump, then you'll be able to capture tenant session in clear test. So. Um, well, let's carry out some configuration settings here. So um, the first thing is, let's say our remote host address. And the um, next thing is to set the user file containing um, candidate usernames. And the next thing is to set the, the pass file containing the candidate passwords. Um, I think that should be that. Let's have a look at the, the options again. Um, brute force speed, we're going to leave it as that. It's not particularly ideal because this would be alerting intrusion detection uh, systems. But uh, this is a tutorial, so don't have to be worried about that. Um, um, I, I'll probably need to, maybe I need to activate this stop on success as well. So control R. Um, set on to, to true, but it's not ideal because obviously you want to get as many um, potent, uh, possible valuable combination of uh, of credentials. Um, I think we've got everything up um, set up now as necessary for this exploit to work. We can just um, execute it. Yeah, hopefully it won't take long because I've got a very short list, but that's the nature of uh, penetration testing and password cracking. It, it can't take forever.
Good. As you can see that we've got um, a green line of success as the plus line on the left hand side and uh, the username and password are obviously MSF admin, MSF admin. There's no surprise there. And that's the reason why we set the stop on success to true, partly because we didn't want this process of checking for valid and um, working combination um, to carry on forever. We haven't got all the data for it. So what we do next um, is just to telnet our way into the vulnerable machine from our attacking machine. Um, I'll open another terminal here and, um, and uh, just... Um, Type in the following command. Right, and um, there you have it. Uh, we are on a Metis protocol machine just like that. So um, you can run staple commands um, to verify um, what your status is. Obviously, we know what the credentials are. MSF admin, MSF admin. And um, yes, we can work out what the interface configuration is. And uh, it does confirm um, the, the IP address of a of vulnerable machine. And we find out who you are. And uh, uh, it just, just shows up uh, the level of permissions uh, that you, you've managed to compromise the remote machine under. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you have any questions, then stick it in the comments. Uh, this tutorial is done, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.